Today I'm gonna to show you guys how to color dodge. Hey guys, welcome to Flurn. My name is Aaron Nace. You can find us all up on the Twitter and the Facebook at Flurn. Today is uh, really nice. Just got back from Thanksgiving visiting with my parents in Pittsburgh and uh, man, vacations are really, really great. They help you to center recenter and figure out what's important to you in life and uh, I'm happy to be back here making Photoshop tutorials to help you guys out. Today we're doing something really really cool. We're going to be using the color dodge feature in Photoshop, something that we don't do a whole lot um, but I'm going to show you guys a really good example of when you can do it and we're going to be using one of our family's images to get it done. Let's get into it. All right. So here's our image. This is by Marianne and really, really cool images. This is a self-portrait and I don't know where this is taken, but man, I want to go to there. <laughs> I want to be there. And Marianne submitted it to our backlit contest. So she's one of our winners. She wins a Flurn Pro tutorial. Guys, if you want your images edited here on Flurn and you want the chance to win a Flurn Pro tutorial, all you have to do is submit it in our contest. We have one every single week. So this is our image. This is to start with. And Marianne said she wanted to do some things with color toning. And um, it's a great image. And let's go ahead and see what we can do. So this is my take on it. You guys can do your own thing, but I'll just kind of show you the tools, things like that. So the first thing that I'm looking at here, uh, I'm just going to sketch a little bit around this image just, just to see you know, what, what we might want to do with it. The first thing I'm thinking is like this sky could probably get a little bit more color in the sky. Well, I don't need to draw well. That's why I do Photoshop. So <laughs> we'll just put some color in there. Um, anytime you see like a, a light flare or something like that that's natural, I really like to play that up. We can do a lot of cool stuff with that, um, with color and with, with brightness and things like that as well. We're going to work some, bring in some color here. So we could do like complementary colors from here in our highlights and our shadows. We can work on that. And I really just want to draw a little bit more attention here as well. So we could do some vignetting, making these areas around here just a little bit darker in the corners, and that's going to help draw our eye directly to our subject. So that's what we're going to do in today's episode. Okay, let's go ahead and start off with our sky. I'm going to grab an adjustment layer, and I'm going to go to Curves. Now here in my adjustment layers, I'm going to go to the RGB. You can actually change it per channel as well. You can work on your curves in different channels. So let's go to our red channel, and I'm going to click and drag this down just a little bit. And you can see what it's doing is taking my highlights, and it's making them more cyan, because that's the opposite of red. So we're dragging that down. All right, let's go ahead and I'm trying to figure out where about we want this. I definitely want some like yellows in the sky. That's looking pretty good. And let's bring our, down our greens, which is going to put a little bit of magenta in there as well. And then if we bring our reds down, that's going to do the cyan. So um, yeah, let's leave it right about there. I, I think that looks pretty good. So we'll go ahead and close that down and see what that did. It basically, it brings the light tones of the entire image down and also colorizes them at the same time. Now, in this case, I only want it to affect the highlights. We're just going to affect the highlights because I want my shadows to kind of remain the same. We're going to be doing something different with those later. So we're going to double click right here where it says curves. Double click there. And then here on this layer style, I'm going to hold Alt or Option. Let's just make sure you guys can see everything. Hold Alt or Option and click right over here where it says underlying layer and go from the left to the right. There we go. I'm just going to slide that all the way to the right. And what this is going to do, let's hit OK is it's going to make this layer only visible where the highlights are for the underlying layers. So you can see it's showing up there in our sky, there in the water, and there in the light parts. Just a really nice way to color tone highlights. You can still go in here to your curves adjustment layer, and I could go and change these colors, and you can see they still only affect the highlights. Whatever I want to do, but I like how it was just then. Okay, next thing we're going to do, I'm going to make a new layer here. Let's grab a curves adjustment layer. Why not? We'll grab a curves adjustment layer, and uh, I'm going to play up this sparkle just a little bit. So we're going to go to our red channel. I'm going to pull that up a little bit. And our blue channel, we're just going to pull that down just a little bit. It's going to give us orange. red, More red and less blue. The opposite of blue is yellow. OK, now I'm going to hit Command-I, which is going to invert that layer mask, making it black so nothing's visible on that layer. Let's grab our gradient tool. And I'm going to use a radial gradient here. We're going to choose the foreground to transparent gradient. OK, so <laughs> it's a lot to do. Get a click on your gradient tool. Then you got to click on your foreground to transparent. Then you got to click on your radial. Then you got to make sure that white is your foreground color. And you can do that by hitting D for default colors. So now I'm going to click here in the middle and just kind of drag out just like that. And that's just going to give us a little bit of light right there on that, on that thing. And if it's too much red, in this case it is, we just go back to our red channel and we can adjust that later. There we go. So that's just going to make that shine a little bit more. 
Now, the next thing is really cool. This is where we're going to start playing around with our color dodge. What I'm going to do is I'm going to grab a color that's already in our environment. And this is an important part because you want to use a color that's already in your environment or else you're going to start to get some really weird, funky colors. So grab our brush tool and then hold Alt or Option and then sample this color right over there. That's pretty good. And uh, now we're just going to start painting. So I'm just going to start painting right around this area, maybe change my flow down to about 20% so I can get some nice blending. Let's go ahead and change our layer from normal down here to color dodge. There we go. And if it's not light enough, we can just kind of change that color and resample. And I'm going to paint coming in this side as well. And it should make it look like basically the sun is coming through this area here and kind of coming up and shining through there. And you can grab an even lighter color and kind of bring it up there as well. So you can kind of like play this however you want to. You can, you know, go pretty hard with it or you can go a little bit softer. Um, if you want a little bit gone, just use your eraser tool and then erase some of this away. And then you can kind of just paint it back with your, um, with your brush again too. In this case, I wouldn't really worry about layer masks at this step. And uh, the reason is just because you're you're just kind of like erasing some and making some disappear. And um, if you start getting too into the layer masks, uh, oftentimes what happens is that um, you won't be able to paint it back if you wanted to paint it back. So instead of messing around with the layer mask there, I'm just going to worry about my layers here. All right, and let's grab a nice orange color. And this is just a good chance to play around too with color and everything like that. All right, there we go. It's a little bit too yellow up there. So I'm just going to hit the eraser tool. We're going to erase that away. And let's grab a different color and just see what we can do that's, you know, a little bit not, not so obnoxious is the general, uh, the general goal here. Slightly less on the obnoxious side. There we go. Maybe some oranges in there and some that's nice bright yellows. Okay. That looks good. And you can always lower the intensity and change your layer masks and stuff like that just a little bit. Let's go ahead and bring it over there just a little bit as well. OK, so that looks pretty decent. It's not perfect just yet, but it's looking decent. Now, the other thing that I want to do here is I want to figure out basically um, a way to mask this out for this, uh, you know, this little boulder outcrop that we're seeing there. All right, let's just grab this color here. You can continue to go in here and play around. Now, this little outcrop that's going in there, we don't have to actually select this out very well because we're going to do a blur. But what I do want to do, let's grab our lasso tool. And we're just going to use the regular old lasso tool here, not polygonal lasso. Um, the edge of this rock is like, you know, it's like it's gnarly. <laughs> that's the uh, scientific term for a So it's OK to use the regular lasso tool because if you're using a pen or a mouse, your hand's going to do this a little bit. And that actually helps out when you're trying to like make the edge of a shape like this. So I'm actually going to come in here and just you know, shake my hand a little bit. I mean, whatever, do whatever you want. Um, but just kind of like tracing the edge, slightly inside of the rock. And we'll come on down there and then come over around here. There we go. And we'll make that a selection. Now, I'm going to click Alt, I'm going to hold Alt or Option and click on my layer mask button. And that's just going to make that area not visible right there where we selected out. So you can see it's, it did a good job. It did too good of a job, really. It's, it's a too much of a perfect selection. So I'm going to click on this layer mask now. We're going to go to Filter and down to Blur and Gaussian Blur. And I do want to give it a decent blur because you do have light leaks. Like light would come around those ed edges just a little bit. And so that's what I'm trying to, uh, that's what we're working on here too. So we're going to hit OK there. All right, there we can see it looks pretty good. And then here on the layer mask, I'm just going to paint white just, just, you can see here, let me just show you guys what I'm doing. You see that edge there that's like from the layer mask? That's hold alter option, that's what your layer mask looks like. So I'm just going to paint white just to like kind of fade that in. Because you don't want it to look like, you know, you don't want it to look fakey, fakey fake. But there we go. There, that looks pretty good. So all that with the color dodge, um, you know, just a regular layer, we grab some colors and then we set that to color dodge, which is really, really nice. And here you can totally change your opacity and, you know, whatever works for you guys. It's not, you know, there's no rules when you're doing this sort of thing, but it's just a fun way to play around with light here in Photoshop. Okay, 
So the next thing we're going to do, let's go ahead and uh, darken up some of our background. I'm going to grab a curves adjustment layer. We're going to just click here right in the middle of that RGB and drag that down. Okay. Let's use our gradient tool again, and I'm going to use a linear gradient now. We'll hit Command I on that layer mask to invert it. And I'm just going to click and drag from the top left down. There we go. Maybe hit undo and make that a little bit bigger. There we go. And we'll just do the same thing from the bottom up. Cool. To give this a little bit more focus. All right. The next thing I want to do, let's just grab a regular curves adjustment layer. Eh, let's grab a levels. Sometimes I just want to use levels. Sometimes I want to use curves. There's not much of a difference. Um, but what we're going to do is grab the blue channel and kind of pull this up a little bit, pull some colors into our blues. And let's go to our red channel and then pump this up a little bit. And here you can choose. I, I kind of like this idea of like a little like cyan and orange color scheme going on. But this is, again, it's totally up to you as far as, you know, what you'd like to do there. Um, this is really cool for color toning both the highlights and the shadows. If you wanted to, because we do have that light source kind of coming through this image here, um, I'm going to grab my gradient tool and then paint with black here on our um, on the layer mask. We're going to use a black radial gradient and click and drag that out. So this will help to just add some some of that color back, like right there. So it's basically just not affecting that area. All right, and then. If you, do, if you are coloring an entire image, generally, if you want to make things brighter or darker, moving past from this, you want your coloring of your entire image to pretty much be your last layer. So if you decide later, later you're like, ah, I want something to be brighter or darker, do that underneath your color layer. And just you double click right here and just call it color. Um, the reason is because if you do it underneath, it'll encompass the color layer will encompass your changes. And if you don't, it's going to mess up your colors afterwards. So that's why I'm doing this layer underneath my color layer instead of above it. Just make that a little bit brighter and hit Command I, and then you know maybe I just want this a little bit, a little bit brighter in there. Why not? Just because I want to. Do what I want. <laughs> it's Photoshop. That's the whole point. Just do whatever you want as long as it looks good. All right, that looks pretty good. And then I'm gonna go in here Blend If one more time and make sure this is only visible where the underlying layer is lighter. So we're going to double click here, and it's going to just really blend in with the rocks really well. So Alt or Option, click and drag from the left to the right there, and you can see there's the before. Just kind of looks a little hazy in the after. Looks like it's, you know, that light was actually coming through there, which is nice. All right, and we'll just paint it a little bit more on there as well. And if you wanted to add a little bit of color, you can do that too. Let's do that, just a little bit of color. Click on the red channel, just hit the up arrow a couple times, blue channel, and click the down arrow a couple times. So you can you can add color as well as uh, light, which is nice. Curves really do make a lot of things easier. All right, and that looks pretty good. Now, normally I would take a little bit of a break and kind of like come back and look at this, but um, for now, I think it looks pretty good. So we're gonna hit Shift and click on all those and hit Command G. So here's our before. And uh, still a really great image by Marianne. And then our after, we're kind of like zooming right into our subject. We know exactly where to look. And uh, the colors, um, I think anyway, are, are nice. I like color. And I hope you guys too. So that is it for our tutorial. Guys, thanks so much for watching Flurm. I know you got busy lives. And hanging out with me for 20 minutes is uh, it's an honor that you would choose it to do so. <laughs> Have an awesome day. Thanks so much, and we'll flirt you later. Bye, everyone. What? Gnarly. Gnarly. That's the secret. If you want to make Photoshop tutorials, you have to make farting noises. Hi guys, Kat from Flirn here. For more information on our episode, please check out our website at www.flirn.com. Also check out our latest photo shoots, which include turning a woman into a chocolate bar, making an epic burger, and lighting a hand on fire. If you want a free tutorial, please sign up for our newsletter because it's a free tutorial. It's awesome.